I always knew I'd, I wanted to be an artist. I trained as a painter, uh, and I didn't make sculpture really until I was in my late 20s. And I, I started by making little tiny figures, and I sold them for $4.99 out on the sidewalk. So then every time I made another dollar, they'd get a little bigger. When I started the subway project, I really went to do research on how the subway was built. I did research drawings with the Thomas Nast. I did studies of people in the subways. I did s drawings of telephones that I then converted into sort of surrealistic sculptures. In a normal installation, we'd go in with the work all planned out and install it within a week. But in this situation, I would put out four or five pieces and I'd watch for a couple months and see how people reacted and then I would think of new ideas or new places to put them and I'd add more. So the installation itself took about two years. There was enough time that I could actually make new figures or pull new figures in. I think I put out about five times what they paid me to do out there. So finally my wife stopped me and said, that's it, you know, we've got to leave something for our daughter's inheritance. But uh, I got so excited by the situation, it was so ideal for me in the subways that I kept putting more and more work in. I hate to give it away, but I think there are 108 sculptures all over the place. The artwork itself has uh, a kind of five character types, blue collar workers, white collar workers, cops, all male and female. Uh, usually the guys have no pants on, the women have no tops. That seems like a kind of balanced deal. Radicals have pointed hats and no clothes, and my favorite are rich people with top hats. And I take those five classes and kind of make vignettes of meaning out of those five classes. When I did my first project in Battery Park, and I put the little figures out, and the guys didn't have pants, and I, I imagined that I would be out there grinding off 150 little penises. You know, I thought it would be big trouble. But nobody's actually you know, been damaged too badly by that, you know, that I know of. Uh, lots of kids have grown up with it, and, uh, you know, we can all live with this level of um, uh, honesty out there <laughs> in the public heart. It's one of the things that I uh, really admire uh, MTA for is that they let that stuff go through, you know. Ah, it's okay. You know, it is an adult. You know, you see worse things in the subway than bronze penises. <laughs> if I'm feeling depressed, I'll take a subway over to 14th Street, get out, and something is always happening. Somebody is always there, touching it, standing on it, looking at it. I saw one guy shaking the snake down on the L train and trying to get it loose, and then the train pulled in, and he was not happy that he couldn't get it and he kicked it really hard and he went jumping into the subway holding his foot you know <laughs> there's always something going on so that's one of my biggest rewards is just to go there and watch kind of anonymously and see people engaged in it and i think what's my problem you know and i get back on the subway and i feel fine